Um, today I want to introduce you my work on IoT safety and security. Uh, more specific, specifically, I will evaluate how these little connected devices operate correctly individually and in collections at runtime. So in the past decade, connectivity um, of devices has become more extensive than ever before. As you are probably aware, this has all come to be known as Internet of Things. The commode devices that integrate physical processes with digital connectivity have had a profound impact on society. IoT is not magic. So just like any other competing system, it has a well-structured architecture. In this architecture, devices sense the physical processes. In turn, they are used to actuate a set of other devices. These devices are often connected to an edge device, which controls the communication between the devices, cloud backend, and the mobile application. So mobile applications are used to configure these devices and install IoT applications, which are simply programs that are used to create custom automations. Um, for instance, at the right bottom, you see a simple IoT application that turns on the lights and unlocks the door when users arrive home. So um, while IoT have embarrassed by users and industry alike, IoT has also raised concerns about the safety and security of these digitally augmented spaces as well. You probably have seen similar articles that the industry and academic literature have recently uncovered. For instance, what we see is the attackers are able to control uh, remotely a car. They have infected IoT devices with malware and turned them into botnets and hacked the smart door locks to break in the houses. But when we look into the reasons to understand how exactly these issues are happened, what we see is similar to the traditional computer security problems, um, many of these failures are consequences of software bugs. Uh, for instance, exploiting a software vulnerability in Jeep's multimedia system, or they are user error, poor configuration, or fail to design, such as sending passwords in plain text or failure in timely applying the security patches. However, we found that IoT introduces new class of failures. The interactions between devices leads to um, unsafe and insecure environments. To illustrate, consider one would like to create custom automations using a set of IoT devices. Therefore, she installs some applications from IoT and trigger action platform market. The first IoT app basically activates home mode when the light switch is turned on. The second IoT app turns on the heater and slow cooker and unlocks the Peugeot door when the home mode is activated. And the third app sets the alarm and turns on the coffee machine at a specific time when the lights are turned off. Then she installs a trigger action app, basically trigger action platforms such as Ift, Zapier, or Microsoft Flow allows users to install apps that connect IoT devices with digital services. One such example is the Ford app that posts uh, on social media when the coffee machine is turned on. Then she is looking for an application uh, that makes her house safe when she's on vacation, and she installs Simulate Occupancy app, which turns on and turns off the light switches at specific times. At the end, she ends up with a total of five IoT and trigger action apps. In this, each individual device might be operating entirely correctly. However, the interactions among these devices may lead to possible failures within the environment. To illustrate, when the Simulate Occupancy app turns on the lights, Welcome app activates the home mode. When the home mode is activated, the heater and the slow cooker are turned on, and the patio door is unlocked. When the Simulate Occupancy app turns off the lights, Basically, the Goodnight app uh, sets the alarm and turns on the coffee machine in the morning at a specific time. And turning on the coffee machine basically triggers the trigger action app, which posts um, to the social media. In this environment, the resulting states may lead to safety and security violations and put users at risk. For instance, the heater is turned on, the patio door is unlocked when user is not at home. Additionally, violations within the IoT environments expands to the digital domain, such as turning on the coffee machine, posts on social media when the user is on vacation. So therefore, in this talk, we asked the essential question. 
how we can prevent safety and security violations within IoT environments. To address the violations in this intertangled environment, we need a custom design for IoT. This introduces several challenges. First of all, we need to model the device behaviors from application source code. And then we need to construct, co construct the states and the transition between the states and store them in an efficient data structure. And then lastly, we needed to develop mechanisms to prevent systems from arriving undesired states. So our central insight that allows uh, make progress in this exceptionally difficult domain is that IoT programming platforms are highly structured. And then such structures allows us uh, to obtain the state machines from the application source code. Basically, state machines have a set of states uh, and transitions. We can map the device attributes to states and events to transitions. Also, this model can be constructed through static code analysis or by monitoring the device behaviors when they are executing. However, static code analysis might have some limitations. The first limitation, for instance, might be some pathological cases in which code analysis may fail to identify the combination of the devices. For instance, there might be multiple light switches in a house, and the analysis may fail to identify or over approximate which switch is configured by a user. And secondly, in some cases, in some cases the state transitions um, may appear to violate one of the policies when, in fact, transition is in line with the user intent. For instance, a door unlock state, when user uh, is not at home, might be flagged as a violation. However, this might be true when the user opens it for a security guard during an emergency. So therefore, to address these challenges, we have developed IoT Guard. IoT Guard is a dynamic policy-based enforcement system for IoT. First, it adds an extra code logic to an application source code to collect application information at runtime. Then it stores this information in a dynamic model, which represents the runtime execution behaviors of the applications. Lastly, it enforces identified policies on the dynamic model of individual applications and interacting set of applications too. IoT Guard implements two mechanisms to enforce the policies at runtime. The first mechanism blocks the states that causes the policy violations, and second mechanisms enables users to, to deny or block the uh, states through runtime prompts. So the first challenge in IoT Guard is instrumenting the code to collect app information. From the inter-procedural control graph of an application, we develop an instrumenter that's produced in three steps. First, it identifies the device actions in an app, and then for each action, it performs a pet-based static analysis to collect the event that triggers the action, the path condition for the action, and the numerical value action uh, in the action call. It, and then it inserts instrumentation code before an action uh, is executed, okay? And then transmit this information to the data collector. Here, we apply a couple of optimizations in order to reduce the number of lines code to be added to the uh, application. For instance, uh, when, it, when actions share the same event and pen condition, single code block is added. And lastly, the code instrumenter um, inserts a guard, guard for each action, which allows to execute an action based on the response returned from the IoT guard. So after instrumentation code is added to an app, app forwards its information to the data collector. The data collector stores this information in a form of dynamic model, which represents the runtime execution behavior of the apps observed so far. Specifically, the data collector represents events and device actions at states, and a transition is added from the app's events to each action, and each transition is an object which stores the application context, such as device ID and app's definition. Turning back to the, our examples at the beginning of my talk, data collector receives the um, uh, application information at runtime, and then constructs the each dynamic model of the apps, and then it checks whether they interact through a common device or abstract uh, attribute, by mapping the device actions and events. And then in this case, what happens is uh, it obtains the final unified dynamic model because there's an interaction between the apps. So after we have precisely constructed the dynamic model, we systematically identify a set of safety and security properties. 
Policy represents the real world needs of the users and the environments. We have developed three types of policies. First, general policies are constraints um, that the states and transitions should never occur regardless of the application semantics. For instance, property one, general property one states that a handler must not change an attribute to a conflicting values um, in the same control flow. To detail, mo motion active event handler must not turn on and turn off a switch in the same branch of the handler. And the second, application specific properties are developed according to the use case of one or more devices. For instance, application specific property one states that the door must not be unlocked when user is not at home. In addition to the properties that we have identified for IoT devices, we have also identified policies for the violations of, uh, between the physical and digital domains. So the first violation is integrity violation, which happens untrusted event changes a trusted attribute. And the second violation is the confidentiality violation, which happens an event changes an attribute that makes the um, private information publicly available. So for integrity policy, we label the events and action with trusted and untrusted labels. And for the confidential violation, we label them with public and private labels through some natural language processing techniques. So lastly, we have developed GPL, which is a policy language in BNF notation that allows users to refine or add new policies to the IoT Guard's existing policies as well. So after policies are identified, IoT Guard enforces relevant policies on the individual and unified dynamic models. To enforce general and application specific pro pro uh, policies, we have developed algorithms through reachability analysis. The security service first obtains the events and actions of a dynamic model, and then it looks for a path that contains events and action of a policy clause and detects the state that leads to the violation. To enforce the trigger action specific policies, so security uh, service first obtains the integrity and confidentiality labels, and then checks whether a pet exists from an untrusted state to trusted or uh, a trusted to a public state which makes the private information uh, publicly available, right? So lastly, we have developed two mechanisms to enforce the uh, policies at runtime. The first mechanism is basically blocks the device action um, by sending a block response to an app conditioned on the state that violates the policy. And the second mechanism enables users to allow or deny violations through uh, runtime prompts. So by means of evaluating IoT Guard, we performed a market study, which we used 35 uh, IoT and 30 trigger action apps. These apps are executed in a simulated smart home, which includes 20 different IoT devices, a total of 29 devices. In the first set of experiments, we consider that devices operate in isolation, which means that they do not interact with each other. Even though the devices operate in isolation, IoT Guard enforced three policies and blocked three undesired states. By investigating the dynamic models, uh, we found three reasons for policy enforcement. So the first reason is that even though devices do not interact, the interactions might happen through abstract attributes. And the second is the lack of waiting process for the trigger action apps. And lastly, misconfiguration of numerical valued device attributes may cause some violations as well. So in the second set of experiments, we configure the apps with devices based on their descriptions. Our goal is here to reason about the interactions between the physical and digital domain. We found that there are three groups of apps that interact with each other. And in this, IoT Guard enforced nine unique properties and block 18 states. So I will present here two groups of apps which interact with each other. In the first set of applications, three apps turn off the lights um, when it is sunset, when the motion is active, and at a specific time. Turning off light changes the mode to away or sleeping in an IoT app and turns on the heater, slow cooker, and lights. IoT Guard here enforces a set of policies and blocks the actions that turns on the appliances when user is sleeping or not at all. In the second set of applications, three trigger action apps turns on the light when the door ring is pressed, a missed call, and an email is received. Then another application opens the window shades and sends a notification to the messaging, uh, some messaging application. Here, I would like to also note that these two groups interact 
interact through light on event as well. In this IoT guard blocks unsafe state of turn light on and prevents unauthorized states of window shades and send notification. And lastly, I would like to show you the, the, the performance of IoT guard. We measure the code instrumentation and runtime overhead to collect app information Basically, the number of line uh, added to an app is on average 14. IoT Guard also appends on average 20 lines of code for tra transmitting this information to the R servers. And the average time to um, basically instrument the code is uh, 4.1 seconds. And then to study overhead of the, uh, the overhead introduced into the system by IoT Guard, we record the end-to-end -end latency. Here, uh, it means the latency means when the app receives an event and when the app executes an action. So the figure here actually illustrates the overhead of different number of interacting apps. This interaction size also impacts the number of states that we need to check and also number of policies needs to be um, enforced too. So as you might see, IoT Guard constitutes less than additional 20% overhead for five interacting apps, which is executable in real world scenarios. Thank you so much. If there is any questions, I would like to answer. Any questions? From Chinese University of Hong Kong. I want to know how do you extract the, the policies from the uh, IoT apps? So the question is how we basically construct the policies. That's a very good question. Actually, right now, I'm working on to automate policy generation. So we use requirements engineering in order to come up with these policies. So based on the devices and the capabilities, I get the combination of devices. And then I define the assets, which are the device capabilities. And then um, see how these devices might be used together. So it's context dependent, so basically. So is there a uh, manual the performance of your automatic approach? This is uh, manually. So I come up with all type of policies. And then from this list, what I do is I manually go over and then see what represents the user security and safety. And then define them as a policy. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, it's not like 100% automated approach. Hello, um, this is Musa from UIowa. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank you for this excellent talk. Um, since uh, smart homes uh, systems are kind of becoming more popular and people are Can using it. Can you speak it. like louder, brass? I'm having trouble to understand. OK, so um, is it better? Yes. OK, so um, since smart home platforms are becoming more popular, I'm wondering if you plan to uh, make IoT Guard uh, publicly available for everybody to use? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm working in a couple of years like uh, in IoT domain. So we have implemented Soteria and Saint and IoT Guard. So if you check my GitHub page, most of the code is available. Uh, but IoT Guard, like, I think it misses some trigger action platform processing. Uh, I'm currently in the middle of my job application process, so hopefully in a couple of weeks I will do that. Thank you. All right. Let's thank the speaker again.